Welcome back. So last time we've set up the AMP project and installed all of its required dependencies. We're ready to start working. I've already gone through the steps of mapping out some of the gaps that we have between implementation and design. We're going to proceed by making some tweaks and fixing those gaps. Let's jump in. Now that we're in Codex, the first thing that greets us is the Codex homepage. And here we can see a number of different things. The first of which is a collection of boards. Now, boards is a concept that is introduced by Codex. And essentially, it is a place for you to place your components and render them under different conditions or in different scenarios. On the left side, we'll see a list of components that Codex has automatically detected in our project. Now, I can click on one of those components and see a filtered view of only the boards that have to do with this component. This lets me render this component in different cases, different states, and to see how it would behave. Now, if I'm looking for a component that is not currently represented in a board and I want to create a new one, I can simply click this Scan for Components button at the bottom left. I'll click it, and very quickly, Codex scans my project and identifies all of the components within it. And here, I can now filter down to that view and create a brand new board for any component in my project. And so we've finished reviewing the Codex homepage. Now is the time for action. As mentioned, there are a couple of tweaks we want to make, and so we'll be jumping into our first board. Once we click on that, immediately our component is rendered in view. We'll start off by scaling it to fit inside our view, just so that we can see it a little bit better. And let's see what parts comprise our UI here. Now, in our center of our screen, we can see the stage. And the stage is where our components render. And if we move over to preview mode, we can see that now everything becomes interactive, just like it would in a browser environment. So I can play around and see how it behaves. On the left side, I'll see the Elements panel. The Elements panel is reminiscent of the Figma Layers panel or perhaps the browser DevTools DOM Inspector, which shows me the structure of my component, what elements and components are inside. And on the right side, I have my editing panels. I have my styling panel. I have my computed styles panel, the properties panel, and lastly, the board settings panel. All of these let me tweak the behavior and the aesthetics of my component. Another thing to remember is that in Codex, every project is a code-based project. And so we always have access to the underlying implementation. If we want to take a look at the code or even edit it, all we have to do is open the built-in code drawer. Now, let us take a look at the four fixes that we plan on making. I'll start off by zooming in a little bit to 50% just so that we can see things more clearly. And now the first thing that we want to fix is this delivery address input. Uh, the corners are too sharp and they don't align with our design. Next up, these two buttons over here are too close together and need to be spaced out a little bit. After that, we'll move on to handle the sign up button on top here, where we'll want to strengthen the call to action to encourage users to click it. And lastly, we'll fix this text in our main fold to something a little bit shorter, a little bit nicer. Now, in Codex, the real magic actually happens when we move over into select mode. And now I am able to start selecting things either on stage or by using the elements panel. And once I have a component selected, I can drill into it either by double clicking or by clicking on this edit component icon. Once I do that, I see the inner scope of the component, all of the elements and components that comprise it. I also see the scope represented in these breadcrumbs on top. Now you can also notice that while I'm selecting things, the code drawer here actually follows me around. This is because sync selection is currently enabled. This means that whatever I have selected on stage or in the elements panel is reflected in my code drawer so that I can always find what I'm looking for in case I need to address it in the code. Let's close the code drawer for now and focus on our fixes. So I'll zoom in a little bit further to 100% just so that we can see things better. OK, so I have my address input over here. I'll drill into that, select the input element that I want to style. And now let's take a look at our Styles panel and how we can accomplish that. The first thing we see in the Styles panel is our Classes input. This shows me all of the various classes that are currently applied to the selected element and also allows me to create new classes and apply them. Beneath that, we can see that we have our Selectors input. And this would actually show me all of the various selectors that target my current selection so that I can actually apply styles and edit it in whatever way I want. In this case, we're looking to fix the corners. So I can start scrolling down in this panel, seeing all of the various visual controllers that I have to edit CSS and to edit styles with. In this case, we're looking for the corners controller. I can also filter for that in this list over here and find it immediately. 
Now I can set the value to what it should be, which is 12 pixels. Jump over into preview mode for just a moment to see that, yeah, it is applied and it looks just the way I want it to, which is fantastic. Next up, we want to fix uh, the gap between these two buttons. In order to do that, we'll start by moving into Figma for just a moment and taking a look at the gap as our design calls for. In this case, we see that it should be 16 pixels. Moving back into Codex, I can select this text node and do the same thing to see that currently it has eight pixels applied and is not what we're looking for. Another way I can see this is by moving over to our computed styles panel. And here I can see all of the styles that are being applied to this element. So if I'll select their container, I can see that it does in fact have a column gap and a row gap of eight pixels being applied. Uh, this is very similar to the view that you would see in the browser dev tools and the computed styles there. The nice thing here is that you also have the ability to click this edit in styles panel button and immediately it'll take you over to the styles panel, navigate you to the correct controller so that you can make the fixes for yourselves. Now, let's open the code drawer for just a moment more so that you can see how these changes take effect in real time. We can see that we do have a gap of eight pixels also being applied to the row here. Now this is horizontal, so this doesn't actually mean much and we can get rid of that. I'll do that by clearing the existing value and you can see that it has disappeared. And now I'll move over to set the gap that I want on the column. I can enter a value like we previously did, but in this case, I'll click the attach a variable button in order to open up this pop-up. And here we can see all of the various variables and tokens that Codex has already identified in my project. And I can scroll through them or I can filter them for what I'm looking for. We saw it called for 16 pixels and so I can select that token and immediately you can see it has taken effect. Nice. Okay, now we'll want to fix the buttons on top, just like we mentioned. So I can double click outside of my component to drill out and drill into the component that I'm interested in all the way until I reach the button in question. Now, in order to make the change that we want here and to strengthen the call to action, we'll move over to the properties panel. We can see that this component already has a property called variant. And this represents a number of ready-made designs that have been made for this component. It is currently set to secondary and I will change it over to primary. And now if I move over to preview just a moment, we can see that the hover effects also take effect and it looks just like we wanted it to. Awesome. Now let's head back uh, to our landing page, perhaps zoom out a little bit. And we can see that now we want to deal with this text right here. So as mentioned, it is too long, probably from a previous version of our design. And so we'll want to fix that. And we'll change that to get your food delivered in no time. And that I think is already looking better as well. I can close the code drawer, scale it to fit, and we can see that everything has been fixed and looks exactly like we wanted it to. And with that, our changes and our tweaks are complete. All that's left now is to bundle them up together and to send them back to our GitHub repository. This is so that a developer on our team or a colleague can review them and make sure that everything is in its right place. In order to do so, the first thing we'll do is to create a brand new branch. We'll do this by clicking the branches menu on the top header. And here we can see a list of all of the branches that currently exist in our project. In this case, we'll want to create a new one with our changes isolated and scoped to this branch. We'll select the new branch option, name it Tom slash landing page fixes, create the branch, and we can see that it has indeed been created successfully. Then I'll click this commit button in order to actually create a commit where I bundle the changes together and send them to Git. And I'll add a descriptive message such as fixed styles in landing page and press commit. This has created the commit. The commit is still local. All that remains for me now is to actually sync it and publish both my branch and all of the commits within back to the repository for other people to view. With that, our branch is now in our Git repository. Everyone can access it and we have successfully completed this task. To quickly recap what we've done so far, well, we fixed a number of styling and spacing issues in some of our components. 
We strengthened the call to action on our signup button by making it to be a primary variant. And we fixed the text on our main fold. In the next chapter, we'll create a couple of new components from scratch. Looking forward to seeing you there.